Hey, good news. We're here today at the Azure Enablement Show talking to Kunal about operational excellence. Join us. Welcome to the Azure Enablement Show, where we'll be discussing the challenges you and our other tech-savvy customers have encountered. Together, we're going to be talking with experts to find out how they think about these problems, recommended tools and best practices, and tips they've learned from years of experience that you can use. So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about operational excellence. And I thought it would be useful for me to approach this like a customer. So let me switch to customer mode. OK, now I'm back in the customer mode. Now I'm going to get a chance to talk to Kunal about my operational excellence problem. So hey, Kunal, it's really great to see you. Hey, David, nice to see you too. So I could really use some help. Things at work aren't going nearly as well as I'd like. Um, let me tell you the things that are going on for me. One of the things that's going on is that we have these, I guess you'd call them epic deployments, in which we mm -hmm. rev our software like once a quarter, and everybody is all hands on deck, and we all have to stay there like over the weekend, in which we try to like mm -hmm. go to the next version, but then also stabilize and get it working. And then the week after that is terrible because we're trying to like clean out the pieces that we didn't get during the weekend. Um, and then it starts over all over again. So that's that's one of my problems. Um, the other problem I'm having is that I've got issues with, I think, my monitoring, right? Like, I don't have a good sense of uh, like how my systems are doing, but I do know that they're kind of paging me like every hour, and I'm getting pages at 2 a.m. at night about this sort of stuff, and it doesn't seem sustainable. So I, I would really like your help. Are these the third things that you think you can help me with? Yeah, that's a great, uh, you know, great question, actually, David. So uh, I think we need to talk about operational excellence. Uh, if it's okay, I will share my screen uh, to... Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely glad to hear what, what you have to see. So, David, let's think about operational excellence as a function, right? And it's a function of disciplined execution. So it's about doing the right thing the right way, you know, most of the times, and then positive outcomes. And this is where we are really asking, are we solving the right problems? So moving on from there, actually, if we think about this function and plot it as a graph, right, uh, there are four quadrants we can look into. So let's start with the you know, bottom left quadrant. So this quadrant is what I call the quadrant of chaos, right? Uh, it's common for anything where there is no clear ownership or leadership. And when we think about apps in this zone, you know, these are the ones that are no longer actively maintained, but are required to be kept running. Uh, teams that are usually maintaining them, you know, lack knowledge of, you know, how these apps were built, you know, what needs to happen, you know, and those kind of things as well. So management and operations in this quadrant is very ineffective and chaotic. So moving on from there to the next quadrant, uh, this quadrant is a quadrant of high toil zone, right? Uh, teams, your teams will spend a lot of time in manual activities like release, patching, backups. Uh, based on what you were saying, it feels like you know your release management process falls under this uh, kind of a quadrant. Yeah, 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 totally. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, and again, you know, these are the things that could be easily automated, right? So you're spending a lot of cycles on things that could be automated. If you think about it, examples, your teams are good or great in this quadrant in following procedures, step-by-step -step processes, but might be you want to think about how I can take it to the next step. Moving on from there, uh, this is the next quadrant, and I call it a quadrant, unsustainable quadrant, right? Uh, in this, the focus is usually on treating the symptom and not much on underlying cause. Uh, so, you know, I know you mentioned you spend a lot of time over the weekend to, uh, you know, to resolve a production issue. What what did you notice, David? Well, I noticed that I noticed that we're, we seem to be doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and that, you know, t the same sort of problems come up and the same sort of things have to get handled manually, which seems really unpleasant. I see. And was there any specific uh, reason for the downtime that you noticed? Well, sometimes the downtime is caused by us upgrading stuff. Sometimes the downtime is caused by some something where the application just decides to to die on its own. It's really it's really hard, but it does it seems to do it like over and over the same way. I see. And how did you solve this? You know, how did you? Uh, what was we, the fix for that? We restart it. We hit it with a hammer until it works again. Like like I can't say that we do anything anything. I wish I knew the, the one magic way to do it. I see. So this is exactly you know the problem with this quadrant, right? When you are working in this quadrant, uh, you are always firefighting, and you know you really want to solve the underlying problems. Uh, and you know, so for example, you know, if you are just trying to every time the problem happens and you are just you know 
might be uh, scaling up your machine, might be you want to think about, hey, you know, uh, might be I want to look into what's happening in the application. Is it really scaling uh, as an example there? OK, so I will move on to the next quadrant. And I think this is the desirable or the strategic quadrant is what I call it, right? It's a very strategic and you know before we go there you know it does require considerable amount of investment you know both from your team as well as from the senior leadership right uh, but it, uh, if you think about it it helps you to scale better you know as your systems uh, complexity grows or as number of workloads you manage grows uh, you you are in much better uh, uh, position to scale right does that help david it does i mean it makes me a little sad because i think um, we're in the wrong quadrants um, and uh, we kind of have to move towards them. So I would love to know, like, where do I go? Like, how do, how do I move towards that, that, that magic quadrants up and to the right? That, that's a great question. And I think uh, maybe we should look into, you know, Microsoft's, uh, you know, Azure well architected operational excellence kind of guidance. So let me quickly walk you through those, right? So if we think about, you know, operational excellence, uh, it's one of the key pillars of well architected right mm -hmm. and it offers you the guidelines to create desirable and sustainable applications uh, so you know think about it that top right quadrant uh, what we're thinking about here right and there are five principles you know five kind of uh, key principles for operational excellence uh, i will take you through but based on what i'm hearing and your challenges probably will focus on first two okay okay so the first one is about optimizing your, you know, build and release processes, right? And I like, I, I would start with a question here, David, you know, what if, you know, your non-production environment, let's say you have a big release coming up, right? It's uh, might be a bef just before a Black Friday release is coming up. And, you know, you have a strict procedure, you test everything in, you know, non-production before it's got, you know, before it's released to production. What if your non-production environment was deleted by accident? How quickly, uh, you know, can you bring that up? The short answer is we would have to really work at it. We might have to go back to old documentation, like it was built manually. I imagine it would be we'd have to rebuild it manually and figure out what we did and hopefully get that right. That that's the, you know that that's correct, right? So that's that's a challenge, right? And you want to really think about uh, everything as code when you think about this kind of area, right? This principle. So not just infrastructure as code, which is again a very good practice and common practice these days, but also configuration as code. So that's something you want to think about. So I'll move on from here to the next principle. This is about monitoring systems and understanding operational health, right? So when it comes to monitoring, uh, you can monitor system for different things. So you can monitor it for availability, right? Uh, for thresholds, you know, CPU, memory, uh, might be abnormal performance degradations. You can monitor for that security issues or might be business process impacts, right? However, you know, what I see and observe commonly is, you know, the question of how do I monitor is relatively easy to answer, uh, but what do I monitor is not that easy. So that's mm -hmm. something you want to really think about, might be work with your dev teams, operation teams, business teams to figure that out. So I will move on from here to the next uh, principle, which is use loosely coupled architectures. And this is, you know, think about this as the advantage loosely coupled architecture, you know, gives you is it allows you to deploy systems independently, right? You can deploy them, test them, update them, patch them, all those good things. Uh, what you're doing essentially is you're minimizing that blast radius, right? Uh, you know, by having the clear boundaries between different systems. I'll move on from there. So next principle is about uh, reverse recovery and practice, right? Uh, this is all about testing your disaster recovery drills, you know, including failure scenarios and validating operational runbooks. I have worked with hundreds of customers and the challenge is I see everybody agrees, you know, when we talk about this, uh, but rarely does it well. So this is again an area you want to investigate and see, you know, how uh, confident your teams are because failures are bound to happen. But, you know, having the right procedures in place and, you know, kind of confidence in those procedures will help you. Okay. Finally, uh, embrace uh, continuous operational improvement. So. As business evolves, it is necessary to circle back and review the procedures that are in place, right? To ensure that they are fully optimized. Okay, that makes okay, perfect sorry. sense. So, I, so I get, I get these things. I get these five things. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit to wondering, like, okay, I can go at this many different ways, but I kind of would like to know, like, how do I get started? Like, how do I know, like, where's the right place to, to dig into this stuff? 
So I'm so glad you asked that question, uh, David. So I will actually, if, if it's okay, I will share my screen and I will show you, uh, you know, show you a quick demo of uh, this. Great. Uh, what you can do is you can do an Azure Well Architected review. Uh, and if I click on this, I can start my new assessment. So when you start a new assessment, uh, you can fill in details about your app. So your e-commerce app, Contoso app, and then you can sign in to your you know, subscription and pull in recommendations like Azure Advisor recommendations that we provide. Uh, so that can be provided, right? So once you can sign in and provide those recommendations, then you can go and select, hey, I want to do an operational excellence review. So you can say, okay, I want to do an operational excellence review for this solution. And it will pro, uh, it will uh, you know present you with series of questions that will help you understand your systems uh, and you know kind of figure it out. So once you've done that, uh, you can fill in those questions. And then once you've filled in those questions, I would recommend, highly recommend this to be a group activity. So talk to your team, ask them questions, you know, and work together to fill this up. Uh, once you've done that, you can actually see the results. So it will tell you where you stand. Uh, so this will show you what your score is, uh, you know, and in this case, it's showing me my score is 28. It will also show me recommendations. Uh, what are the things I should be looking into? And those are the details you can then work with your team. Uh, so. David, that was my demo. Uh, and again, you know, if you are one of the managed accounts, uh, you know, and you got your cloud uh, solution architect working with you or your customer success account manager working with you, you can reach out to them to, you know, to actually help you with these assessments and also remediations uh, as well. Do you got any questions for me, David? No, um, I'm, my, I guess my only question is, do you know anybody who could help me with these first two things, the sort of the release engineering aspect and the and the monitoring aspect that I could talk to? Yeah, I think I know two of my colleagues would be great, you know, to talk to. So I will connect you with them, uh, and you can, you know, de definitely dive deeper on some of these topics. Okay, that would be fabulous. Okay, that that's great, David. Uh, by the way, I have a question for you. You know, that snapping thing you do, does uh -huh. it work for me as well? Can I try it? Uh, I have no idea. Let let me do it. Hey, that's pretty cool. Maybe I can do it to you. Okay, this is getting entirely out of hand. So I think what I want to do is thank you, Kunal, and I want to thank you for watching this. Folks, I hope you'll join us for another episode of the Azure Enablement Show, where we're going to dig deeper into some of these topics that we talked about in this video. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll talk to you a little bit later on.